Okay, yes, we're here, but I've learned that you've got a, there's about an eight second delay. So hello mm -hmm. everybody, we're here, we're back again. This is our third Thursday of transformational, inspirational um, in lockdown. And I have a special guest with me today. Again, Angela, you'll recognize her. And I'm Judy K. Martini, your transformational coach. And there's so much we want to talk about here today. And I, I just, you know, there was so much going through my mind about mindfulness, about inspiration, about self-care, and how that all ties into inspiration. So Angela, thank you for being here again. Angela is an artist in so many senses of the word artist, right, Angela? We, yes. you, you just do so many things um, in the art world. So just briefly tell us who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, I, amongst many things, I'm actually an illustrator, an artist, and graphic designer. And um, I, my main focus with illustration has been children's books. And I also have sold my artworks um, overseas on exhibitions. You know, I've exhibited over many years uh, with group exhibitions as well. Um, I have won one or two awards over the years as well. And um, I've really enjoyed being an artist and being creative. I think it's not just about being an artist. It was just fulfilling something inside of me that needed to be creative. And um, and that's why I've, I've continue to be an artist and I worked really hard to make it a career. Yeah. Yeah, you do. And it's mm -hmm. naturally inherent within you. I mean, you've known just as I, I've known that I was a poet, a writer, an artist back when I was a little child, we all, and here's the thing about going, you know, when people say they're not in, inspired for anything, they're not creative, they're not artistic. If we go back to when we were a child, we always knew we had that creative instinct within us and we always did the things and played the things that were creative and imaginative and people tend to forget that so you've always known that since you were a child as I and so our inspiration comes very naturally and very easy to us because we're never bored no. <laughs> good morning Natalie Natalie's on Angela that's good hi Natalie my sweetheart, my best friend, my awesome daughter. And you know, so inspiration comes naturally to those that are artistically inclined. For those mm -hmm. that aren't, or for those that have been sort of in a, a nine to five workforce since they were, you know, in their late teens, early twenties, find it very hard to get creative. And so I'll take Natalie, for instance, she has become extremely creative and wanting to spend time alone to create, to be inspired, to do things. She never used to be, you know, but she's learned that. And she's remembered, not only learned how to do that, but she's remembered that that's within her, you know. And, and at first she thought, oh, my goodness, am I going to be bored at home during this lockdown? Right, Natalie, you wondered. But then, you know, you went, oh, my gosh, I'm loving this. You know, I'm loving the fact that I get to stay home and be creative and do things I want to do. And so she has remembered that she has inspiration and creativity within herself. And there's Susie. Hi, Susie. How Hi, are you? Susie. So, you know, and there's Susie, who's also inspirational and creative as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to see what you ladies want to talk about this morning, because we had, you know, we had a couple of ideas about, you know, self-care and about mindfulness and what what does that really mean yeah. you know and oh my gosh angela self-care yeah. can go into <laughs> 10 more facebook lives Jeez. you know 10 okay. hours of videos and remember that that special group i had last year where i ran a course on um, extreme self-care i could probably run that again because i would say let's just say um and i know natalie's doing a lot more self-care a lot more but you do a ton of self-care, you know? So just give, just give our audience a, a sort of what you do daily for self-care. Well, you know, I think one of the things you did was you told me to always check in with myself, which I never did before. And, and I think that um, throughout the day now, I, I stop what I'm doing and I say to myself, okay, how am I feeling? You know, are you, are you okay? Are you tired? Um, do you, what do you need to do now in this moment? And what I do is I find that if I'm feeling very tired, I stop what I'm doing. I sometimes go sit outside. 
I breathe fresh air. I think that helps me a lot. And also, yeah. if I'm tired, I don't work because I find when I work, I make mistakes. And I found that um, when I met you and you spoke about self-care, I didn't understand what that meant. It was like such a foreign concept for, to me because I I worked in the corporate world, you know, for many years from the time I left school. And it was only in the last 10 years that, or 10 to 15 years that I've been working from home. And I had never had the opportunity to practice self-care because there was no time for it. I had to work, I had to be there early, I had to come home, I had to feed my family, um, and there was no time for myself. So the only thing I actually did was sleep a lot, okay? But that sleeping led to a lot of depression and anxiety. So I was not managing my anxiety and depression and my stress levels. So sleep is not good when you are anxious and depressed because then you just want to sleep more and you, you don't actually want to get out of bed. That happened to me. So when you said to me, practice self-care, I had to actually ask you, what must I do? And it was so odd. And you said to me, well, if you can't go and sleep. And I'm like, but it's the middle of the day. <laughs> You know, I know, and you know, Holly Brook has just come on. Hi, yes. Holly Brook. Nice to see you here. Hi. Holly Brook um, had to learn as well to practice self care. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? And and I, Natalie too, and Susie as well is learning that, because I mean, the normal self care to us is what having a manicure, pedicure, sleeping in on a Sunday morning, maybe booking a massage once a month, you know, curling up and reading a good book, but that self-care is outdated and mm -hmm. that self-care is very very redundant at the moment even though it's important we need to do extreme self-care right mm -hmm. and that self-care moves like you said beyond the objective of just in that moment of self-care of sleeping or or getting outside for fresh air it encompasses mm -hmm. so much more like mm -hmm. susie's baking homemade bread today that's good self-care unless mm -hmm. She's doing it because she has to. Mm. But even if you have to, you can still enjoy it. it. You know, it's a matter of mindfulness. And that was something else we put in our meme about what we we're going to talk about is mindfulness. Being mindful is being in the moment and being mm. on purpose and having an intention. So as Susie's mm. intention was because she was out of bread in the house and had to make it for the kids, that wouldn't be a really great intention and a positive um, attitude to go forward to bake bread. But if she can't wait to bake mm -hmm. bread because she loves kneading it, she loves the texture of it, she loves the smell of it, then that is being mindful and that is self-care. Mm -hmm. And see how mm -hmm. the two mold together there, right? About doing yeah. something because you want to or doing something because. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Susan yeah. says because she's enjoying it, because I have to, because I enjoy it. You see, there's a huge, huge difference there. It brings up all types of emotions. So Holly Brooke too, um, I remember with her taking a while to put a lot of self-care into her life. Because like you, Angela, we only mm -hmm. have the basics of self-care, a manicure, a pedicure, a sleep in, a read book, a go to the beach, whatever. Yeah. We didn't understand that it goes beyond that. It's about self-care mm -hmm. of your emotions, dealing mm -hmm. with your own stuff. It's self-care in the physical body under every aspect of the physical body, not just Jeez. the sleep, right? An aspect mm -hmm. of all of the spiritual body, the mindfulness, the connecting to a higher power, right? Mm -hmm. So you you really did an excellent job on that over the years, Angela, because you incorporate so much. Yeah. Yes, know? I actually make it a practice now. And that's the thing is that you actually have to set aside time daily to actually practice things like I have a foot spa. So that foot spa with Epsom salts grounds me. And I find that it gives me a time to breathe because also connecting with your breath is very important. And taking time just to step back and breathe is also another way of grounding yourself, um, you know, and actually taking a step away from what you're doing. Because if you carry on doing certain work or you work from home or you're doing something consistently, like you say, because you have to, you actually, first of all, lose the joy of what you're doing. Yeah. Number two, you lose the focus of what you're doing and you actually get tired and yeah. uh, one thing you spoke about was alignment and that was one thing i thought what do you mean by alignment you know and, and 
being in alignment to me is to always ask yourself, are you enjoying yourself? Um, are you tired? Because the minute I start getting tired, I know that I must stop doing what I'm doing. I yep. need to stop and go do something else. And I like baking. I love cooking and baking. And I, I do a lot of that for my family. So that is another creative skill that I do. And it's active. Mm -hmm. Because you also mentioned to me when I'm working, because I'm an artist, I sit very long hours and I don't really move. And because I have lupus and hypermobility, I get a lot of pain in my joints and my body. And you see, keep saying to me, plan it, you know, like make an alarm or something. And every like half an hour or an hour, get up and move. And it made a big difference in my life because you're moving the energy in your body. You also, you're shifting your focus a bit so that you, you don't stay focused on one thing and tie yourself out. And alignment to me goes in hand with self-care. And also mindfulness, like you say. Mindfulness to me is being aware of your thoughts and your feelings uh, throughout the day. And I was also, I did not know what mindfulness actually meant at all. And, um, because my mind was so chaotic, so full of thoughts all day, every day, and negative thoughts. And when you helped me to become more aware of how I talk to myself, yeah. how I actually think without um, overreacting to my thoughts because I think that's what we do. We we create scenarios in our head like a worst case scenario, especially now with lockdown. Oh, what's going to happen three months down the line? Oh, what's going to happen, you know, one month down the line? Can I pay my bills? Can I do this? But you cannot know the future. So the best place to be in is your now. You know, you always speak about the now moment and yep. that's what I try to be and it takes practice it's not something that you we've lived you know we haven't lived our lives like that we've lived in the past and we've lived in the future but we don't live in our now moment and that moment by moment is how most of us are going to have to live in order to cope with the ever-changing um things that are happening right now yeah. because moment to moment things are changing and um it's so fast paced how do we keep up with that so my mindful um things that you taught me was to be detached from your thoughts in a way observe them so become more of an observer of your ways of thinking the way you process information and I've learned to quiet my brain and I had to do it because my mind and my thoughts were driving me bonkers okay and I had to, when you quiet your mind you stop stressing you stop worrying you know you stop doing um you know, creating these worst case scenarios in your head um, and then eventually believing it's going to happen and stressing yourself out completely. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. And that took practice. It was a daily practice. And now, because I've practiced it, it has become part of my life now. And oh. I do not have that fear anymore. You know, you I don't. You hit it on, you hit the nail on the head. And that, good morning, Wendy. Thanks for showing Hi, up. Wendy. Wendy's tried to get here a few times. You hit the nail on the head about practicing. You know, people mm -hmm. think alignment and mindfulness and um, self-care should come naturally to us, you know, because we're human beings, but we have been conditioned for exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come naturally. And so we have to practice these things into being. And the practice, oh my gosh, the practice is the hardest thing at all at all because you've got to make a mindfulness decision to do yeah. it and the tools yes. that you need to do you know we gather up tools that are personalized for you so that yes. you can help yourself to focus in you know, on the things that feel good so brooke mm -hmm. i, I sent a message to you brooke about sharing some of the things with us that you do for your self-care during lockdown but they probably, because Brooke um, has been doing a lot of things for quite a few years, she probably does these every day as well. So mm -hmm. Wendy says self-love is the learned behavior. Oh my gosh, we just said that, right, Wendy? Yes, and you know that. It's a learned behavior because it's practice. You practice focusing on self-love, self-care. And self-love doesn't always come because of self-care. There's a no. whole other topic. Self-love is takes a longer time than self-care does. You first have to practice self-care, and then along with it comes all the other things about self-care with your emotions, spiritually and emotionally, and then the self-love is, is starting to filter in in a new way. 
So that's important too, but oh yes, learned behavior, we all know that because this this doesn't come easily, folks. This, this learned behavior is something that we have learned as a child and it's our default program. We always run to it and it's always a self-destructive, unworthy mm -hmm. program. I'm not good enough, I'm not valued enough, I'm not, I don't get affirmed, I don't like who I am. And all of mm -hmm. those things that we have learned, that's a learned behavior. So self-care is a new way, a brand new way of, of learning about yourself in a new way. Good morning, Jason. Thanks for coming, Hi. Jason. And so like, like Angela said, this is a focused practice. Yeah. It, it is not easy. It's one of no. the hardest things you have to do for yourself because you don't know how to do it. You know, you don't. and also you know, you don't know how to say no to people. You know, Judy, that's another thing about self care. Is that yeah. you know, especially as women, I mean, men also have that that problem. You know, yeah. in, in not saying no to your family when maybe yeah. you need to for yourself. And with women, um, especially mothers, you know, or, or you know, just being a woman that is running a household, yeah. you really have to be able to say no. I can't do this. I have a limit. I'm not exhausted now can somebody else take over and i really had to learn how to say no to people no to clients no to family no to friends and in the beginning i felt so guilty because of the people pleasing you know i i, I felt so bad i'd actually apologize for saying no <laughs> <laughs> yes i can see you doing that i'm so sorry yeah. for saying no you know <laughs> I did. I would say, so, I'm sorry. And then I'd go and do what I, I actually didn't want to do anyway. So I'd do it because I felt guilty. And yeah. you know what? You know what built up is resentment. And actually, I started resenting doing things for other people because I felt guilty. It was like a whole set of feelings that I had. And then I realized that I didn't value myself enough to say no. I did not have the self-respect yeah. and I had a lot of, um, you know, I, did, I had self-doubt and I didn't, I actually didn't feel good about myself. But the minute I started doing self-care, I got better. I got better at saying no. I got better at my boundaries because I started looking at myself and saying, you know what, I'm worthy of love. I am worthy of taking time out and spending time just with me and nobody else. And that for my for me, self-care is also spending time alone, getting quiet, and asking myself questions like, what do I really want? What do I really want to do and accomplish today? What you know, what does my life really look like? And I had never done that. And I now do it on a daily basis. I don't do it once a month. Or on a Saturday or Sunday when it's weekend and it's quiet. I ask myself every day so that I keep my focus on my intentions, yeah. on my, my life, how I, I visualize my own life. And, you know, most of us have family. So a lot of us are entangled with our family. And so we do give a part of our time to be with family and attend to their needs as well if they need us. Yeah. But... You taught me don't with mindfulness, don't expect things from other people. And I think that's important. A part of mindfulness is don't expect people to do certain things or behave right. a certain way. And that's a yeah. whole other subject in there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we could do a two, three, four yeah. more. <laughs> well, um, now, Brooke says yes, and some of that self-love or lack of it has been popping up. It's easier mm -hmm. to get out of it now though, saying yes, Saying yes, saying no has been a hard one to learn. Yes, yeah. we know that, Brooke, and it is does get easier, right? And the more yeah. family and, and people you have around you, the more you get practice at it, you know, mm -hmm. because self love is learning. When you start to love yourself in a new way, in a, in a higher respect way, higher integrity, saying no becomes a victory for you because yeah. you understand it's not about them, it's about you, it's mm -hmm. about you looking after yourself. And Jason, mm -hmm. you've always been a yes person to a point, haven't you, Jason? We'll see if Jason can chime in. I know he's at work because he's an essential person, you know, but I think, you know, most of us here have been a yes type of woman, you know, because that's what we've been trained to do. 
And mm -hmm. so the expectation part, okay, okay, that can be our next week's show, Angela, expectation, yeah. because that's yeah. huge. That's huge. Yeah. And yeah. never mind expectations from other people. How about expectations from your immediate people in your life, your partner, your yeah. parents, your yeah. kids, you know, mm -hmm. because we've trained them how to treat us. So there we go. There, there's next week's subject, expectations. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, but this, yeah, this, this is, is good, Holly. Holly, this oh. is good. Holly writes, self-love is not selfish. Mm. And that's something we haven't been told. We've been told that looking after yourself, taking time for yourself, saying no to people is being selfish. That you yes. should put everyone else's needs first because they need you. You know, why would you put yourself first? That's being selfish. I was taught that way too. I was yeah. taught that it's selfish to take from anybody or anything, even if it was given as a gift. You know, there was a time when I was raising, what was I, raising two kids or three? I can't remember. And I tried to go out to work because I love to work. I love to contribute. And I went out to work and I'm trying to find babysitters and daycare and I'm working and I'm raising two or three kids on my own. And I'm like exhausted from working, you know, eight hours a day plus driving. It was at least a half an hour. And so I'm exhausted from working eight hours a day. And then I had three kids and there was usually diapers and then there's laundry and then there's everything else. And I wasn't able to make the bills. I wasn't able to make my full mortgage payments at time because I wasn't making enough money. So I'm mm -hmm. talking 40 years ago. And back then they had something called an assistance program, which was called Mother's Allowance, which mothers with children who didn't have support from exes or anybody around could have their needs looked after and their children's daycare and medicines and things like that looked after and their dental bills and other curricular activities. And it was more advantageous to get my kids looked after with their medical bills, their dentists and everything else in their daycare by mother's allowance than it was for me working. I was going into debt working. So yeah. I had to go on mother's allowance to supply for my family. And my mother said to me one day, God rest her soul, in her thoughtful, heartfelt way of her thinking she was doing good for me, she says, you're being selfish, taking. You're taking. Uh -huh. And I said, but mom, I, I tried the other way and it doesn't work. She says, you're still being selfish. So can you imagine what a scar that put on me as I was trying to mm -hmm. fend for myself, give, put food on the table for the kids, get their medical bills looked after, get their daycare looked after, get their teeth looked after, and I'm being told I'm selfish, even though I was working my butt to try to make ends meet. So, you know, this was the generation I grew up in, and you as Angela, that anything that we don't do that's according to their expectations, there's our next mm -hmm. video, yeah. according to those rules, you know, yeah. if we time for ourselves and say no I can't do that for you or no I don't want to look at that or read that or see that we're told we're being selfish mm. you know, so I took years to get to lose that understanding that I was not being selfish by saying no to people shutting the yeah. door turning my phone off not answering texts not showing up canceling appointments like I I still do if I'm not up to par I will cancel an appointment and reschedule an appointment with a client because I'm not at my 100%. So yes. I'm that selfish of me to try to give to a client when I'm not at 100%. So Holly Brook, you are absolutely right and you have learned that. And yeah. so Jason says, I definitely have used yes lots. Mm -hmm. I know that about you, Jay, I do. And it, as Angela says, it turns into resentment. And yes. anger because you're constantly giving. And I think Jason would go a thumbs up for that. Susie mm -hmm. said, I was a yes person for many, many years. I always felt so guilty for saying no. There you go, Angela, feeling guilty. Yeah. Even yes. if I was busy and couldn't help someone, I felt bad for having to say no. It yeah. was very exhausting. Now mm -hmm. I'm at the point where I ask myself, is this something I want to do? And if the answer is no, then I say no, and I'm okay for saying no now. Good. So you have learned that saying no is extremely healthy for you. And I would, I would always suggest you check in with those emotions, because at first when you say no, what did you say, Angela? I apologize for saying no. <laughs> and I felt guilty for like three hours afterwards and think, oh, was that the right thing? <laughs> yes, I know. And it's terrible because it means that you – Put yourself last, no matter whether you are running on empty and you just think you must give, give, give. 
But that brought up something called martyr mentality, which means that we need to sacrifice ourselves to make other people happy. And, and I was stuck in that cycle, you know, not necessarily learning it from my parents, you know, but just in a cycle because of that was my personality and being very e empathetic and being very, uh, you know, I always used to look at other people. And even if I had clients, I would normally get involved with their problems and try and help them with their problems. And I got to a stage where I thought, I'm not equipped to help other people. I don't have the skills i can't do any of that and when when i met you i said to you i can't help anybody i actually had reached that stage because i was so empty inside and what helped me build up that um you know self-love helped me self-care helped me yeah. mindfulness watching um being aware of how i talk to myself the negative thoughts i had I had very bad negative thoughts. And that, you said to me, was beliefs that I had taken on from other people. And what other people had said to me about who I was, actually, I'd taken it on and started believing it myself. And the one affirmation which really even now today I think about is, I am enough. And you said to me, say affirmations. I didn't even know what an affirmation was. And take each negative thought and change it into a positive one. And then I realized all my thoughts were negative. And the, and the thoughts that were really, really bad was the way I was speaking to myself. I was speaking to myself as if you're not good enough, you're unworthy, you don't, you, you know, you don't have the skills, you're not beautiful, you're not pretty, you're ugly, you know. And, and those type of things, I actually was not even aware of my own self-talk. But when you become mindful or as a mentor you started showing me all the things that i was doing habitually and i was doing it as a habit that was self-destructive for me and i was self-sabotaging self-destructive and i was in my own mind actually making myself so stuck that i couldn't move anymore and when you pitched up in my life it was the best thing that ever happened because you taught me and gave me tools to, to do things, you know, which I, you gave me life tools. And I think that is what people need now is they need tools to help them get through this lockdown and especially being mindful. I mean, if you've got children and a home and a mortgage and rent and things like that, this is going to be a very, very difficult time. And I think watching your thoughts is important. And you know how to help people, you help me to be able to um, redirect my thoughts in a positive way that my life has changed. I did a 360 degree uh, transformation. And what I had to do, yeah, I had to take away, it was like for me, I kept feeling like I'm an onion, peeling away layers of myself. And that's what you have to do. You have to let go of old habits old beliefs, old thinking patterns. And we do have thinking patterns that have been, we've just somehow taken them on without even realizing it. And I think, you know, you said to me, you know, write something about what you really love. And I didn't even know, remember, I said to you, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, what you yeah, and I don't know how to be happy. And I had lost my joy, I'd lost my smile, and because of the things that were happening outside of me, and, and I think nowadays people are speaking about go inside, have a look at the world that you've created inside. Yes. And one person said, the seeds that you plant in your heart is where your garden grows. And that made a big impact on me because I thought, what have I been planting in art? I've been planting anger, resentment, uh, hatred. You know, the world's a bad place and nothing goes right in my life and my life is a mess, you know. But then I started changing that and planting seeds of love, seeds of empathy for myself, not just other people. I started having empathy and compassion for myself and started when I couldn't do something, I would say, okay, so you can't do it, you do it tomorrow or whatever, it doesn't matter. And not being saying, oh, you, you can't do it, so, you know, you're a bad person. So I think being gentle with myself was a new concept for me. And that's part of self-care and being yep. mindful of how you treat yourself. 
because how you treat yourself is how you treat other people also absolutely so then, there it is that's key there angela so i know guys yeah. we're running out of time soon and if you have any questions please type them in and we'll get to them as best as we can but you know a lot of you ladies in here have started the journey or are well underway of the journey um brooke you know you've been doing this journey for quite some time and we had a lot of challenges and same with you holly brooke you know but you ladies have come a long way and and you know the things angela is saying is what you've already gone through you know as i'm mm -hmm. looking over at the comments absolutely and this is an mm -hmm. ongoing thing you know one of the things that happens with people is they tend to think it's a it's a journey you go on for a little while and then you're healed and then you carry on life as normal hell no, no. <laughs> it, no. it changes no. and you know i'll briefly briefly say that the energy that's come in in a few days ago like omg it's off the friggin charts for everybody no no matter how um we'll just say advanced you are at um your emotions and your spiritual growth it affects you it yeah. totally affects you you know and it doesn't matter who you are we as humans are going um through so much and susie says angela you are so awesome sounds like sounds to me like you have done so much inner work on yourself congratulations uh yeah and like three three years of it yeah it didn't happen overnight and you know because you become that person yeah like an onion yes yeah. that's how i felt I felt like an onion. I was like peeling away bits of myself. And you know, every time I peeled away a layer, I felt more relieved. I started feeling more like my authentic self. And it's like I had buried who I was um, because I was trying to be something I thought other people wanted me to be. And I was, I had not actually discovered my own personality. And it was like I had hidden my personality. I'd hidden who I was. I was scared to show up in the world, basically. You were. You know, people say you must just show up in the world. And I thought, what does that mean, you know? And slowly by peeling away those layers, and like Susie said, I did inner work. And it was hard. There were tears. There was lots of calls to Judy, lots of messages, lots of questions. And, you know, there were so many things that Judy would bring up. And I would try and back against it and thought, no, something inside of me would say, no, it's not like that. But then I would, I would actually take time away and I would think about what Judy said. And then I would say, okay, and then ask her, how do I work through this? How, how do I overcome these things that are being blocks in my way of being who I need to be? And I was in my authentic self for at least two to three years. It took a lot of that work. And, you know, when I think back of when I first met you, I was so devastated about my life. I felt like my life was over. And there was so much work that I actually did need to do to like myself again. Yep. And and that's and I think that's part of self-care, is to like yourself. Like the person you are becoming and the person you want to be, if that's and I the last thing. And I'm going to venture to say that anybody who's listening to this that probably hasn't mentioned anything in the feed here in the conversation, I would like to take a poll at some point and say, how many of you can say you actually like yourself? Yeah. And how many of you can actually say, I love myself. I am mm -hmm. so glad that I came to this planet and showed up in this earth suit. I am so mm -hmm. glad that I am who I am. And most of the population will not be able to raise their hands and say that. And you know, that's why I, I seem to attract leaders into my practice is because we're willing to do the multi layers of work, the heartache mm -hmm. and the hard work. Right, yeah. Wendy? Wendy's waving, yeah. Um, you know, because we know that there's something deep inside of us that is longing to be us, mm -hmm. the, the real us, instead of our conditioned mm -hmm. beliefs that we've lived under. You know, and I'm encouraging each and every one of you on this feed and and who will watch it to, you know, really reflect about, here's the three tenets that I help people do. Holly Book, Rosie, yeah, she's waving too. To remember who you are at core level, beyond your earth suit, beyond this, this physical suit you in, who are you at core level? And Angela found that out and still finding it out because they're still finding it out. Who are you at that core spiritual level? And number two is, 
you know, what are you here on this planet to do? <laughs> like aside from raising kids, making bread, Susie, you know, whatever, there's more, there's a deeper reason why you're here on this planet. It has to do with your gifts, your talents, your passions, and your destiny. And what are you here to do right now? Not what you're here to do last week or a year ago. That's key. And that's mindfulness. And that's paying attention to your higher self. And then the third thing is, is your higher self, whose voice do you listen to, your intuition, your God sense, your creator, your universe voice, that if you're not being inspired and you're not being guided by them, then you're being guided by your own repetitious, recycled stuff that's in your brain all the time. And that mm -hmm. stuff will only get you more of what you've already got. So I'm going to encourage all of you to take a chance on yourself because you're worth it. You were here for a reason. Everyone's here for a reason and you may not understand it and you may think that you've got such a hate on for yourself and your life is the shits and you're not as good as anybody else. But I'm here to tell you, hell no, <laughs> you've got a purpose and a reason that maybe you're not aware of today. But if you start the process and just put up your hand and say, aha, I'm willing because you know what, good ladies in here, are those that work with me, as soon as you put up your hand and say, OK, show me, it's like, bam. Your life starts changing instantly, you know, and you'll all attest to that. So I want to thank everybody for being in here and today. And please take a chance on yourself because you're worth it. And Angela, what last words of, of encouragement do you have for us today? Because I know you have lots. <laughs> I never stop talking. <laughs> well, you're so encouraging. You're so inspirational. You have so much information for people. But I think it's because I have been where a lot of people have been. I've really been down in, in the darkness, you know, and I faced my darkness. If I can say that I faced my, my shadow side, I faced my depression. Um, and it's not easy to face that head on. And, and um, all I can say is people must not be scared to let go of their old self, their old beliefs. Um, things that are not working for them anymore and to analyze why your life is not working and don't continue with the things that weren't working for you. Be brave enough to try something new and to also try and be a new you and don't be scared about change because most of us are scared about transformation and change. We hold on to that little, you know, that space where we feel comfortable, even if it's a terrible, dark, depressive yep. state. You'd rather be in that than face a whole, um, you know, different future where it, it, you don't know what's going on. But, you know, you taught me to let go and to allow transformation to, to happen. And it's, and it's not something you can see. You can't see the end result of your transformation. Yep. You can never see it. It's a process and you must enjoy the journey of getting to know the new you. Oh, yep. Thank you for that. That's so true. And, and Susie just had one last remark here that she started to use her intuition more and more because she was taught not to. And we are, yeah. we've been taught we're powerless, you know, so yeah. guys, I hope this has helped you today. And please leave comments so that Angela and I both know what to continue to talk about and what I need to make more videos on. And I will be moving over to YouTube. And mm -hmm. Angela and I have chatted about that. And so is another great friend of mine, Diana Brianna Fairchild, who is over on YouTube and, and just doing incredible work over there. So if you haven't subscribed, I'm going to put the link under this broadcast um, on my Facebook feed, on my Facebook post. Please subscribe because I'll be moving things like this video over there as well. So you'll be able mm -hmm. to always have it at your fingertips. And I'm going to encourage you guys to start where you are today, that you are worth it. Please reach out to me. You know I've got compliment. Well, maybe you don't have complimentary calls to get you started, to see if we're a good fit, to see if you even want to work together. But you know what? You'll never, ever regret opening yourself up to the real you. And I think we can all testify as a big yahoo to that because it sure beats the depression and the low self-esteem stuff. So Angela, I want to thank you again. You are, we are just awesome together. We always have been, and we're going to keep doing more of what we do. So thank you everybody. And thank you, Angela. You're just, I just absolutely adore you. And thank you. Thank you for you. Being yourself. <laughs> thank you. I love, I love doing anything with you because, you know, we seem to be synchronized and, you know, and it's, and it's very few people that a person can get on well with and, 
you know, I love co-creating with you and I just want to say thank you and thank you for helping me to get to this point of being able to help others and be of service to others. So thank you. I said yeah. that to you three years ago. No. I know. That's a whole other show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everybody on here. Brooke, Holly, Wendy, Susie, Natalie. Um, I think I got everybody. Thank you. Oh, yes. And Ruth. Ruth, yes. Ruth's an old, um, well, she's not old, but she is a, 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 a secondary school friend of mine. Well, I guess it's old, but, you know, that's that terminology again we use, right? Anyway, thank you, guys. We'll be back again next Thursday for more information during lockdown. Bye everybody. Have an awesome, Bye, inspiring you. day. You know, it's about being inspired, right? It's about being inspired. Bye guys.